Welcome back to Azeng News. Australia's Foreign Minister started her visit to Vietnam. Mexico. Australia's Foreign Minister Mary Spain started her visit to Vietnam by speaking at an ASEAN Australia Forum in Hanoi. Speaking at the ASEAN Australia Dialogue on Women, Peace and Security, Payne praised ASEAN's role in promoting the bloc's prosperity and reaffirmed Australia's commitment to uphold the region's security and stability. She also calls out to Myanmar's regime to improve human rights, cease violence towards civilians, and release Australian professor Sean Turnell. Turnell was an Australian economic advisor to the post-Myanmar leader Aung San Suu Kyi and has been detained by Myanmar's security forces since the February coup. Pain also held meetings with Vietnam's Prime Minister Pan Min Chin and her counterpart Bui Tan Son. Pain will be visiting Indonesia as the last stop of her four-country Southeast Asian tour. Indonesia could phase out coal fire by 2040 with financial help from international community. Indonesia could phase out coal-fired power plants by 2040 if it gets sufficient financial help from the international community. The Southeast Asian archipelago is the world's fourth most populous country and eighth biggest emitter of greenhouse, with coal making up to 65% of its energy mix. It is also the world's biggest coal exporter. We are introducing the energy transition mechanism, meaning that for coal will be put forward or retired earlier. And that's exactly what the, the 2040 for coal is for us to be able to retire coal. If we are not doing anything, they still continue until 2060. If we are going to put forward until 2040, then we need to have funding to retard coal earlier and to build the new capacity of renewable energy. Visiting the Scottish city of Glasgow for the COP26 conference, Sri Mulyani Indrawati said Indonesia will announce on detailed plans to move to clear energy with the phase out of coal being the key issue. Okay, if we want to deliver climate change commitment in a credible way, let's talk about money. Let's talk about plan. Let's talk about the consequence. So we are not just end up at the rhetoric and speech from speech to another speech and another speech. Because these are all something that we can calculate, right? Previously, Indonesia said it planned to phase out coal for electricity by 2056 as part of a plan to reach net zero carbon emissions by 2060 or earlier. She said the plans to be announced on Wednesday moved Indonesia's climate targets beyond rhetoric into the technical details and the Asian Development Bank and other financial institutions were very excited with their ideas. So for Indonesia, retiring coal earlier, it will cost us, then it will also cost the people, it will cost the industry. Let's calculate all the costs. And then if this is supposed to be all I should finance it, from my taxpayer money, that won't, that won't work, right? Because the world asking us, so now the question is what the world could do to help Indonesia. The ADB is leading a group of financial institutions to devise plans to speed up the closings of coal-fired power plants in Asia, including in Indonesia, by buying the assets and winding them down. Sri Mulyani said the country will also need international support to ensure electricity remains affordable when it switches to renewable sources citing a temporary calculation of a need for $10 billion to $23 billion in implicit subsidies for renewable power projects until 2030. Afghan girls desperate to get back to class. To fill her days and keep her mind occupied, university student Hawa throws sketches and pours over books in her Kabul home. Like hundreds of thousands of other Afghan girls and young women, the 20-year-old Russian literature undergraduate has not been allowed to return to her studies since the Taliban seized power in mid-August. And like many of her peers, she's feeling a mixture of frustration and anger that her aspirations to study and work are being thwarted. As long as the Taliban exists here in the country, I can't be hopeful about my future. Because when they don't allow girls to study from the first year, then those of us who go to university and also had jobs were helping our families. Of course, nothing will come of us. Because they, the Taliban, say whatever we studied in the last 20 years is useless.
the hardline Islamist Taliban movement, which stormed to power earlier this year after ousting the Western-backed government, has allowed all boys and younger girls back to class, but has not let girls attend secondary school, most public universities are not functioning at all or only partially. Officials have tried to assure Afghans and foreign donors that people's rights will be honored, including allowing girls to go to school and women to study and work once details on how to do so in accordance with Islamic law are thrashed out. They have also blamed the international community for cutting of aid, making it harder to fund the reopening of schools and universities for all. <laughs> When I see my younger sister and brother who go to school, I feel very sad for myself that I can't study. They, for example, come home and do their homework, talk about their classmates and their studies. But I feel sad inside that I can't go to school myself. More than three months into the rule, that has not happened. And some are skeptical of a group that, when it was last in power from 1996 to 2001, banned all girls from school and women from paid employment. Fewer than 40% of Afghan girls attended secondary school in 2018, even though it was allowed then according to the most recent figures from UNESCO. Much of the country remains deeply conservative, despite 20 years of Western-backed rule and billions of dollars in foreign aid aimed partly at promoting equality and civil rights. Tunnel construction completes on railway to China and Vietnam border. With the last tunnel drilled through on Tuesday, the construction of an NR3 high-speed railway linking borders of China and Vietnam has made milestone achievements. The 46.9 km long railway will link the border cities of Fangchenggang in South China's Guangzhou-Zhuang Autonomous Region. A total of eight tunnels and 32 bridges have been constructed for the railway. Currently, more than 79% of construction work has been completed on the railway, track laying and communication projects will be in full swing. After the railway is put on operation, the history of no railway traffic between Fengchenggang and Dongxin border, Vietnam will end. Trains on the line can run at a design speed of 200 km per hour and travel time between the two cities will be largely cut. Liu Gang, deputy commander of coastal railway construction under the China Railway Nangning Group said, the travel time between the two cities will be shortened from 90 to 20 minutes. It will greatly improve the transportation conditions of the port city and play a positive role in promoting the joint construction of the Belt and Road Initiative of China-Vietnam economic and trade exchanges. Dongxing is located at the China-Vietnam border. The line will eventually boost trade and exchanges between China and South Asian countries. The power supply of China to Laos Railway has been fully electrified. The entire overhead contract systems OCS for power supply of China Laos Railway has been fully electrified as electricity was finally delivered to the Ganlaba Mohan section in southwest China's Yunnan province. The power supply project is a key task to guarantee the scheduled operation of the China Laos Railway, which stretches more than 1,000 km from Kunmin, Yunnan's capital, to Vientiane of Laos in December 2021. The electricity was firstly delivered to Laos section on October 17, 2021, and then through China's Yuxi Ganlanba section on October 21. The construction of the electrification project, involving more than 10,000 workers, started in November 2019 and concluded March 2021. It includes building 20 circuits of 115 kilovolt transmission lines with a total length of 257 kilometers and extend 11 bays in 10 substations in order to supply power from the state-run electricity to Laos EDL Street to 10 railway traction substations. During the nearly of two years of construction, workers have made 15 scientific achievements including the OCE's infrastructure integration in tropical rainforest and a fully automatic prefabricated platform for wires pulling and innovated 65 railway designs and technologies. With the last steel track laid, the railway was completed on October 12, the streamlined China Standard to Bullet Train, while electric multiple unit EMU train for the China Laos Railway arrived at the newly built China Laos Railway Vientiane Station on October 16. Primarily funded by China and directly linked with the Chinese railway system, the railway is the first international railway constructed under the Belt and Road Initiative. The electrified passenger and cargo railway is built with the full application of Chinese management and technical standards. The construction of the whole railway project starts in December 2016 and is scheduled to be completed and open to traffic in December 2021. Afghan vendor hopes for more help from the UN. An Afghan bird vendor said he was worried about dwindling business since the Taliban takeover and that he hoped the UN will step in with broader help. 
Mir Abdul Aziz is among the vendors in the Kafaroshi bird market in Kabul's old city that sells finches, larks, and partridges to other Afghans. But like many other markets, he said businesses have slumped since the Taliban takeover in mid August. The Taliban fought for 20 years in the mountains and deserts until they reached the presidential office. And if the United Nations and other countries who are helping Afghanistan do not assist the Taliban now, then how can they pay the official employees their salaries? The dark era of the Taliban will restart again, like wiping and retaliating against the people, and this is what the Afghan people do not want. The Taliban called on the United States and other countries to recognize their government in Afghanistan, saying that the failure to do so and the continued freezing of Afghan funds abroad will lead to problems not only for the country but for the world. The people are facing crisis. I, as a member of the Taliban, request the Islamic Emirate to help the people. Winter season is coming, the weather will be so cold. There will be snow as well. Therefore, the Emirate is responsible to help and assist the Afghan people. No country has formally recognized the Taliban government since the insurgents took over the country in August, while billions of dollars in Afghan assets and funds abroad have also been frozen, even as the country faces severe economic and humanitarian crisis. And that's all for today. Stay safe, stay healthy, and have a great week days ahead. Bye.